A-E-V-I-L-L-E. Kabil. Have you experienced or experimented uh, with making an extract and then distilling off the um, water or the alcohol in order to have it a very concentrated form? Yeah, you could do it that way. You could you could make a tincture and then evaporate almost all the alcohol mm -hmm. down to about 25% to preserve it. You could do it that way. Yeah. So that would leave like an oil type resin left? Is that what we're no, you product? would have an alcoholic, a very concentrated alcoholic extract, which is called a fluid extract. Okay. It's just more concentrated. Mm -hmm. than um, okay, but the dose can't be too high because then you actually get the reverse effect. You get kind of an immunosuppression, suppressive effect if the dose is too high. And by too high, I mean like you know 20 grams or 30 grams of the of the extract per day. That would be too much. So keep it in the range of between 3 and 10 grams per day of an extract. If you're using the, the mushroom to make uh, tea, then the dose would be about 10 grams to 20 grams of the dried herb to make a tea. And you would drink one, you would drink two cups a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, something like that. Fresh mushrooms, how many grams would you recommend? Uh, well, probably there's you know 10 to 1 as far as water goes. So for some mushroom, not for probably not for polypores. So that might be two or three to one. So yeah, that would be the ratio. Next slide, please. Um, now one interesting question is, does the substrate make a difference? If like the reishi is growing on a cherry tree versus an oak tree, is that going to make a difference? Probably will, but we don't have a lot of research on that. So just keep it in mind that yes, it does make a difference uh, what substrate it's growing. It does pick up some secondary compounds, but very little research on that. But just make you aware of it. Scope of indications, ex expectations of results, duration of treatment. You can take them long term. You know, you know, they they are very non toxic. They have a very high safety profile. For cancer, more effective with radiation or chemotherapy, there are a number of clinical trials showing that people who take uh, chemotherapy plus the mushroom extracts have a five-year survival rate up to one-third higher. There is some really good research on that. What about without radiation or chemotherapy? I wish there were some studies like that. That would be great. No, there are no studies. No. Mushroom extracts alone, no, versus, versus like placebo. That would be good, but no, there are no studies like that. Uh, integration into modern healthcare. More controlled studies are needed, but we, you know, we have a lot of experience with them, and it's just a giant experiment going on out there in the world. People are using them every day, and they're safe, so why not take them? That's, I think, that's the general attitude. Like shiitake, turkey tail. If you have, you know, if you had cancer, I would certainly be downing them three times a day in, in large quantities. Uh, I don't know of any real side effects, except there is some question about people who have autoimmune conditions. Could this overstimulate the immune response and stimulate inflammation? It's possible, but we don't have we have very little data on it. And I my experience with people with lupus and other things is that mushrooms tend to be more modulating and helpful than harmful for people with autoimmune conditions. But I don't don't propose or profess to have all the answers in that, in that regard because there just is very little research on it. Next slide. Conclusion, more clinical trials are needed if to really integrate into health, into modern healthcare, but certainly for, for a natural medicine to be used at home or in, the clin in a natural healthcare clinic, they're widely used. Um, they're really effective for counteracting some of the harmful effects of chemo and radiation, that makes a lot of sense that if you're taking chemotherapy, that's incredibly immunosuppressive, right? Well, why not take something that, that can help support your immune response <coughs> along with trying to kill the, the fast-growing cancer cells? It makes a lot of sense. And there are clinical studies that have been published in reputable journals showing that side effects of fatigue and so forth and immune suppression is less. In fact, well, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, mushroom extracts can lead to increased survival times, better quality of life. Uh, hepatitis C has some clinical reports and preliminary studies uh, for benefits. Uh, 
Next slide, please. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Historical medical use in Asia is based on the precepts of traditional Chinese medicine. So again, many of them are added to soups and traditional foods, and about 10, at least 10 different species are widely eaten in Chinese cooking almost daily. Next slide. The most commonly prescribed in Chinese medicine is Fuling or Wolfaporia, Zhuling, Grifola, Crondosa, uh, Ling Zhu, which is the Ganoderma lucidum, and Cordyceps are some of the most widely used in traditional Chinese medicine. But Cordyceps is really um, harder to get and more expensive to actually get the breeding body. That's so right. So what do you think about I would the use the mycelium. It's going to be, you know, mild. It's going to be milder than the fruiting bodies, but you certainly do pay extra for getting the fruiting bodies. And if you're a vegetarian, you don't want caterpillar, you know, <laughs> but, uh, proteins in your <laughs> medicine, then the only choice you have is, is mycelium. And just take a bigger dose. Take a bigger dose, yeah. Like a two, two time, two X dose or something like that. Uh, next slide, please. So the most clinically relevant medicinal mushrooms, shiitake, turkey tail, rishi, maitake, wolfaporia, which is whole land or cooling, oyster mushroom, cordyceps. These are some of the most important. Next slide. Turkey tail, so, okay, focus in. How much time do we have left? Anybody All know? you want. <laughs> Anybody know? Okay, so, so how much more time? 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to buzz through some of these. I, I really think the background is really important because you could look up the uses of these yourself uh, and just my experience. Uh, I do have a book called Medicinal Mushrooms that have a lot of my notes. This PowerPoint will be on my uh, website, ChristopherHodge.com, in the next week or two. So you can look at that online. You can review this again. I have a pretty good handout on my website. Uh, and, and I will have a, a free booklet that has a lot of this, what I'm talking about, on my website pretty soon. And again, the PowerPoint show. And, and my book, called Medicinal Mushrooms, is widely available. You can just get it through Amazon or whatever. Get your website. What's your website? ChristopherHobbs.com. So check it out. Um, okay, turkey tails is my top species of medicine because it's so widely available all over the world. And it's a, it has a nice, mild flavor, mushroomy flavor. And it has more research than any other medicinal mushroom. So Next slide. Comes, they call it versicolor because it comes in all different colors, depending on, depending on the substrate. This is a good example. The substrate does matter. It does pick up different things from the substrate. So brown, tan, yellow. I'm seeing like really bright yellow ones, blue, and so forth. Next slide. Are there any lookalikes to turkey tail? There are, and I'll show you that in a minute. Here is the false turkey tail, <laughs> Curium hirsutum. And, you know, this one doesn't look a lot like it, but some of them do look more like turkey tails. The underneath is orange or buff or kind of yellowy buff colored, the pore surface, whereas in turkey tails, it's snow white and it has these little pits in it. So it does have a texture. Sterium doesn't have any texture. It's just smooth and orange. And, and they grow in the same habitats. They're not toxic. As far as I know, there are no toxic polypores. As far as I know, there are no toxic polypores. And all the research I've done and experimentation. Yeah. If there is one, Haphalopolis nigulans has a tox a deadly toxin in it. But it does not occur in California. It's so rare though, right? Not in the East Coast. East Coast, okay. There you go. Good to know. But all the common polypores out here in the West Coast are safe as far as I know. Um, okay, so you can use sterium, but it just doesn't have the long tradition and the long history of use as turkey tails has. Next slide. Here's another picture. Next slide. Here is a sterium hirsutum, which you can see has that orange, orange or yellow buffy or um, smooth, glossy underside, whereas the turkey tail has snow white 
pore surface. And here's the turkey tail right here. And here is the sterium over here. So they were growing on the same log. So, you know, you get turkey tails because they just have the long tradition and the long history of use and all the clinical research on them. Next slide. Uh, Termites versicolor has a lot of clinical trials conducted in Asia. Number of randomized clinical trials on stomach cancer, 21, colorectal, esophageal, breast cancer, and so forth. So there, and you can see the number of patients here, 15,000, 17, almost 20,000 patients published clinical studies on turkey tails. Mainly in the form of PSK or PSP, which are uh, mycelium concentrates. PSK, polysaccharide crestin, or PSP, are, are found in Japan and China, and those are pretty expensive. You can make your own at home. So I don't really think you need PSP or PSK, but that's what a lot of the research has done. It's a crude extract of, of uh, Trimedes versicolor. Next slide. Uh, here, that says exactly what I just said. And um, turkey tails contain 62% polysaccharide and 38% protein on a dry weight basis. So that's quite a bit of polysaccharide and you know a lot of protein as well. And some of that protein is not bioavailable, some is. Uh, next, uh, bioactive molecules found in the bone marrow, salivary gland, brain, liver, spleen, and pancreas, and tumor tissue within 24 hours. The, the large molecular weight compounds and, their, and the breakdown products migrate into tissues of the body when you're taking them, believe it or not. They're, it's active transport by macrophages from the gut. Next slide. Uh, next slide. I'm, I'm going to have to skip over some of this. Just get my book if you want more. This is an important slide. $2.4 million was awarded. Uh, Univer University of Minnesota and Bastyr University, this is about seven, eight years ago, uh, after five breast cancer patients, phase two randomized placebo-controlled trial. This is the first mushroom trial in the U.S. Women with early stage breast cancer who have completed adjuvant radiation therapy. They were looking at immune recovery, how fast did their immune system recover under these circumstances, and they found that uh, the women that were taking the, the turkey tail versus the placebo had much faster rebound in immune parameters than women in the placebo group. Then they found, because of those good results, they funded another round of clinical trials, and now they're looking at long-term survivability in prostate cancer and breast cancer. So pretty exciting that our government is funding mushroom research. Pretty cool. Can these be used uh, preventatively too? Um, definitely. Okay. That's yeah. That's the whole point. Is definitely use them, you know, frequently, and eat them, and so forth. Here's a here's a link to a great article on Tremides. I'm sorry that it'll be on my website again. Uh, but 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 there is a, there are some good articles out there. Next slide. Uh, I'm not going to go into this. Next slide. I, I pretty much gave, next slide, I gave a summary, <coughs> next slide, <coughs> next slide, okay, shiitake is another uh, species that's widely used for medicine and has a lot of clinical trials on it, next slide, immunomodulating and I tumor, anti-carcinogenic, antiviral, hepatoprotective, uh,
Ganoderm Masuki. It's a 17 pound Ganoderm Masuki that was growing in the, in the Sierra. Wow. Has similar properties to Rishi. Next slide. Similar to Rishi. Similar, not the same, but similar. Next slide. Uh, southeastern United States. Next slide. Maitake certainly is worth looking at. Next, keep going. Keep going. Fuling, Chinese medicine, keep going. Cordyceps, keep going. For fatigue, sexual debility, and so forth, keep going. Pleurotus, keep going. Oyster mushrooms, oyster mushrooms. <coughs> uh, split gill, uh, schizophilum. This one has a lot of research on it. And it tastes good, and it's used as a food in southeastern Asia. Okay, keep going. Almost done here. Uh, this is an interesting story, honey mushrooms, but I'll, I'll save it for next time. Come to my talk. Come on. Please. <laughs> <laughs> for, I'll, uh, come to my talk in Santa Cruz. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, give me two and a half hours there. Uh, give me two and a half hours so I can get through. It's too, too, bad, too much to go through in one hour. In your book? Yeah, it's in my book, too. Next slide. Keep going. Keep going. Um, Gastrodia and our malaria. That's that's part of the story. I won't give it away now. <laughs> Next slide. Quinine conch, uh, chaga, really cool mushroom. Keep going. Chaga. Corn smut was used for medicine. Next slide. Wood ear is a big one. That take a look at that one. That's a really great one. There's one on display out there. Oh, there's a wood ear out there. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, go take a look at the wood ear. That's, you can buy it in Chinese you know, grocery stores and so forth, dried or fresh. And this is, oh, you can buy it in Monterey Market, fresh. Or you can pick it on Rock Creek. <laughs> Rock Creek. You'll really have a lot of it, yeah. On Rock Creek? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God, I and, and many other places. Now? Yeah. Maybe a little late. A little late. I mean, you well, I guess it's going to snow. <laughs> 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 I got to see it, because don't, you don't see it growing all over the coast. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do have it. Cool. Next slide. Okay, don't forget, every mushroom that you eat is giving you helpful benefits. And there's the porcini. Where I took this in the Rockies, there were so many I couldn't walk without stepping on them. So, uh, next slide. Red belted polypore. Keep going. Amanita muscaria has a lot of history and culture. Next slide. I think that's it. No. Death, death cap. Don't mistake it for the death cap. <laughs> Next slide. Milk thistle is the antidote for death cap. Next slide. Wow. Uh, gilt polypore used in tendon easing pills for an anti inflammatory. And birch polypore, et cetera, et cetera. So, tinnabar polypore. That's about it. Okay, thanks for coming. <laughs>